Well guys, Knives Galore here. Today we're going to be doing a massive knife build video. We're going to be making this. No, it looks pretty insane, doesn't it? This is what's known as a kukri. It's an Indian, Nepalese, that kind of area machete. And I've decided to make one. And I'll be using this. Some 01 steel, 80 by 4 mil by 500 mil. And I won't need all of it, as you'll probably see if I put it on. I've still got a little bit spare. It's about enough, but I just needed it to be wide enough. That's the problem. So that it would actually fit the recurve on the machete in. That bit there is the recurve. And I've decided to hand bevel all of this because getting a recurve on a... If you actually have a look at my grinder, I'll show you in a minute and how awkward it would be if I decided to flat bevel it. I'd have to contort it really weirdly, then come back up, and it'd be odd. Trust me, just be odd. Um, doing it on a contact wheel would be easier. I don't have a contact wheel. I have rollers that I could use, but I'd have to take the whole um, manifold off my belt grinder, and I really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to hand bevel it, it'll be fine. It's 4 mil, so it's thick stuff. I'll show you how it looks in a minute. It looks... <laughs> Pretty monstrous compared to my three mil stuff. I mean, I know a mil difference isn't that it doesn't seem that much, but when you when you look at something precision machined and go, that's about a mil out. It looks huge. I'm also going to be using this. This is some brass. This is I don't know. I think it's maybe half inch by two inch, made by fifty. 150 centimeter, uh, 150 mil. I know those are some weird dimensions. They always go imperial, imperial, metric for some reason. I'm trying to blend in with the rest of the world. The handy thing about this 01 steel though is they also sent me all of this, which was on the front of the 01 steel packaging. I've kept it though because it seems really important. And it was sent to me by, I think it was Coventry Grinders, I seem to remember. I found them on eBay. And they sold it for pretty cheap. This was, I think it was just under, just over 20 quid maybe. Which isn't bad for the thickness and the length. So there's a lot of stuff here. I, I could fit that on, which will be, that's one. I could probably get another knife out of that. Maybe a little gadget out of that. A couple of knives out of here. This is probably three knives and a machete out of this. It's not bad. And bearing in mind I'm selling this. This is already sold. This has already got an owner. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to put a lot of effort into this. This is going to be a, probably a week, two-week project. It's going to be massive. Well, for me, anyway. And this heat treating information is going to be really important in the future when I start messing around with the heating and the quenching and the tempering and the rockwell of it all. I've decided to leave it around high 50s rockwell. Uh, I'm not going to try and aim for anything in particular because I've no, I don't have a Rockwell tester or anything like that. I I do it all in a shed, so of course I don't have a Rockwell tester. I'm just going to try and play it by the timings and the heat that it's all at. If I want it at quite a high Rockwell, it will be around 250 degrees for an hour, and that's the temper cycle. But I'll say more on that in the future. So for now, let's actually get into the build and start laying everything out and deciding what we need, what we don't need, and everything like that. So, let's start templating. Now, if you look at that, that looks massive compared to, say, if I find some of my, some of my three mil stock. That is my three mil stock, and I've, it's on a knife at the moment. This is this will video of the, on, this will be coming out soon. If you compare them, it just looks huge and that's kind of appropriate for a machete it needs to be thick not too thick and the idea for a kukri it's it was supposed to be the indian indian soldier kind of survival knife type thing so it would um chop like an axe it would kind of act like a knife as well you could do menial tasks with it and it act like a machete because if you imagine india it's full of you know those angry bushes and stuff. So you have to come through and cut everything down. Done. That's supposed to emulate in this. So the way it's going to hopefully all be laid out is 
I'll have some wood. I'll have my steel. And I'll have my brass bolster. I don't know how thick I'm going to make the brass bolster actually because it depends on how everything feels at that particular moment. I had to buy really, really thick stock though because of um, I want the brass to come down to here, this point here on the bolster. So I had to buy it quite thick, uh, which will in increase the overall price of the knife. And this, these are just things you have to consider if you're pricing things up for uh, selling them. The problem I normally have is I really undersell my knives. I normally um, I'll just about break even from buying stuff. It's a problem I have and I never really factor in my time because I love doing it so much. Which is something I'm trying to move away from doing. So I can actually turn some kind of a profit and actually pay for stuff that I want. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to hopefully save up for a new belt grinder. Hopefully in the future. And a car and things like that. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. We can start sticking templates on, grinding stuff, and make everything good. So Let's do it. So what I'm going to do is just take a dab of super glue, just put some on the back of this, just a couple of dabs, nothing much. I mean, it's just to keep the template roughly where we want it. And I'm going to try and conserve as much steel as humanly possible because this stuff is not cheap and I do not want to waste the guy who has bought this knife's money. Whoa, just about fits the template on. So I'm just gonna wait for this to dry before we can start working on it. So I skipped all of the cutting out with the, cause I, I just did it with an angle grinder, it wasn't, wasn't really much to it. I've left a little bit of meat in some places just so I can really get those nice contours in. Like here I've left quite a bit of meat there just so I can really get in there with uh, I don't know, whatever I decide to get in with, probably a file. Here, I'm going to just shape it with a um, with the belt grinder. I'm not going to be using any kind of, you know, rules. Like, uh, sometimes I go, oh, I'll only do this one with hand tools and, you know, stuff like that. Only basic things that people who don't have knives make. I'm, I'm going to be using whatever I have to do this, honestly, because I just want to get it right. Because at the end of the day, this is a paying contract, so... Yeah, it has to be of high quality, you know, and that's it really. So if I can achieve a higher quality with a with a power tool than a hand tool, then I'll use that power tool, see? So other than that though, that's pretty much it for the shaping. Just get on the grinder, shape most of these nice contours. I'm going to swap the belt out actually first. Then I can talk about some other things, start lining up drilling holes, beveling, stuff like that. Um... Mm, thinking about the finish, I'll probably leave a fairly rough finish on it. I'll probably I won't go up very high grit at all, just because this is a working knife and it needs to actually work. So yeah, then we can move on to stuff like the sheath, stuff like that, little bits, bobs. It's gonna be a fun little thing. It's got a good weight to it already. You know, it's got good hand spacing, quite a lot. A lot you can grip there, you know, you can really choke up if you need to. You can fall right back for a big swing for chopping something. You know, there's a lot of a lot of things you can do with this, which is the idea behind a kukri. So, I'm going to stop talking and start shaping. <laughs> Just rounding off that edge there to make a nice ergonomic curve into the um, two different areas of the blade. You've got you know the fat point here, which is I guess the heavy portion used for cleaving. Uh, in terms of that's the bit you use when you're chopping like an axe, and you've got this portion here, which is used for I guess more of the knife work. I haven't done too much research in this. I'm going to give it the same bevel either way. I'm going to give it a quite a low saber grind 
maybe, I don't know, maybe low, maybe high saber grind, see how how it all fits with the thickness, because it's so thick, so probably get away with a high saber grind because of the thickness of it all. It might even have to be because of the thickness, but uh, if I give it a low saber grind first, I can always adjust it to become a high saber grind after. So I'm going to keep shaping it, we'll move on to the belt grinder now, as I said before, just to clear out some of these messier edges that I don't like doing with files. So let's go do it. It's a nice clean spine, got rid of all the uh, grind marks from the original cutting of the 01 tool steel when it was just in a sheet because I used the spine as a nice flat surface because I want the spine to be pretty much straight from the uh, start of the curve where it kind of recurves down. I want it to be straight from the start to there, it's pretty much to the end except for I'm going to have a small curve here where it's going to be easy to swing it and chop stuff. and things like that so yep I think I'm pretty much done for the top portion just gonna mess around with the bottom for a bit finish curving this all of that good stuff then we can move on to drilling holes which is gonna be easy we're just gonna sort out how many holes and where they're gonna go we click this is where it gets uh, weird because you want uh, I, I always do my holes by eye I just go right there and there I seem good but I'm going to have to do it a little bit carefully here because I've got two materials butting up against each other. I've got a bolster and I've got some wood. So I've just got to be a little bit careful about what I do. Because they've all got to fit together nicely. They've got to be square. They've got to be true. They've got to be where I want them to be so the bolsters can finish where they need to be, which is good. So other than that, I'm just going to get that done and then we can move on to spacings and all of that. And that'll be pretty much it for the main profiling and sorting out of the knife before beveling and then heat treating so uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just get that done <laughs> Well, I reckon that is the profile done, generally. If I just turn that ever so slightly. Oh, epic camera angles. This is what it looks like. It's, an, it's pretty lengthy, it's about 
about the length of my uh, my forearm plus my hand. It's a pretty big bit of kit. And uh, yes, it's turned out pretty well so far. Shaping's gone well. It's uh, it's a good shape. I like the way it's turned out. Followed my design perfectly, pretty much from the template. Um, I have added one small detail though from the template. In the template, it showed a perfectly curved handle, and that was it. Just one long curve. In this, I've kind of staggered it, so I don't know how well you can see that, but it goes a curve, stops there, small ridge, in and then down. It just allows your finger to sit much more comfortably. And then when you want to, this is for the kind of finer tasks and just general stuff where you can get your thumb on top of the blade. And then if you want to move it back where you're doing a long chop, it sits just behind that uh, notch. So you end up with a kind of perfect hand spacings for it all. Which is really good, and um, yeah, so I'm just going to clean up all the edges, pretty much on the belt grinder, or with a well, with a file then on the belt grinder, round off all the edges so that they're all nice and shapely. Uh, I've already um, done the belly, which is going to be the hardest bit due to the recurve, and believe me, it was. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure we can start drilling holes now. Now I'm going to have to sort up my spacings, which I'll show you how to do. But for now, I'm just going to go on the belt grinder, clean it all up. Next clip will probably be drilling, or sorting out for drilling, e even. Right, so we've got our bit here, and we've got our brass just as a, almost a reference. And we've got to decide what exactly we're going to put where. So I'm going to have an oak handle. This is going to be just made out of an old oak floorboard. I say old, it's just an oak floorboard, this, just a source of oak that I have. So I thought, why not use it? So we're going to use that, that's going to cover this point past this little notch here I reckon. I think it would look good if they kind of met up together. So where this notch hits, that's where I'd like the brass to end. Because I think it would look, um, I don't want to say symmetrical, but it would look mathematically pleasing is the word. So what we're going to do, I reckon we go about an inch and a half on the bolster. So what you want to do... You just take it, mark an inch, I'm going to use this with a pencil actually because it's a little bit, it's a little bit better. You just mark yourself inch and a half, grab yourself a square because these are perfectly ground flat I see. So line those up, then just, oh that was a little bit, that was a little bit cack, there we go. Line that up, you've got yourself that, then all you do, cut that out, translate onto the other one, cut it again, grind them together, and then you've got your two bolster bits. And as we can now see, because we've got this, we can line that up with where we want it to sit. About there I think it'll sit nicely. So if you line that up, put a mark there. And a mark there where it'll sit. That looks good. And now what we want to do, we're just going to work out where we're going to put our holes for our pins. I'm going to eyeball this, and I see I've actually got a lot more room than I was expecting. I could put them anywhere in here, pretty much. So, I think one on top of the other, one of them there, and one of them maybe slightly further down, about... Here maybe. I think maybe there would be good. And I think that looks good if we just Oh good um and just because I'm I, I like engineering and stuff, I I made this perfectly flat all the way along. Just because I, I didn't make it square to this or anything, but I did I did make it flat for just because I knew I'd have to do this at some point. So it will reach about there, which won't interfere with the with the uh, cutting edge at all, which is good, which uh, is what I want it to do, essentially. Hey, my dog's coming out to visit me. That's nice. So I'm just going to put a B here for bolster and H here for handle. And um, yeah, now we can just start drilling these holes out and work out where everything else is. Right, so I've got everything set up. I've just put a little clamp here. Uh, I, w I wasn't able to fit my uh, hand vise on, 
this was a shame, but um, this uh, clamp here basically means when I'm drilling, if it ever catches, it will just butt up against there and then that's it. If I tighten it a little bit more, hopefully it will work a bit better. Oh yeah, it's a, that weird thread, isn't it? That opposite thread. Yeah, so uh, that's all I'm doing. I've marked out what holes I want, centre punched them. I'm going to have four mil for my bolsters because I had a think and thought I probably shouldn't use brass for a brass bolster because it won't stand out and there'll be nothing, be nothing there. It will just look odd. You'll have a, you know, kind of an area of peened brass and that's it. There'll be no contrast. So I changed my mind and I found some of these. There's some pin punches I made a while ago for a job that uh, me and my dad had to do. And um, they're basically just stainless steel. They're not hardened or anything like that or, or even useful at this point. And I only I found them in a bin. So uh, I'm just going to be using these. Just cut a section off and we'll use that. And um, other than that, I'll be using some 5mm brass. Um, just pin material for the main body and then for the lanyard I will be using 6mm outer diameter and 5mm inner diameter uh, brass tubing. These should stand out against the um, oak which is quite dark and the brass which is quite shiny. I'm just trying to make everything contrast nicely so uh, now I'm just going to start drilling, set up my my drilling area, put that on there. It's quite front heavy at the moment. If I leave it like that, it just just wants to fall off. So you can either use cutting compound, um, which is something you put on your drill bit, or what I like to use, you can use this 3-in-1 oil, which is about, it's even still got the price on there. It's £2.80. I mean, no brainer. But um, you can either lubricate the drill bit itself to stop it cooling down, or you can try and lubricate the material to stop the material heating up to heat the drill bit up. Uh, I prefer lubricating the material because I find it's easier in some cases than lubricating the drill bit. Say if I was somewhere else though in a different environment where I wasn't able to access the material, you know, say I tried to put the oil on it and just run straight down a wall, a steel wall or something like that, then I would probably use this. But because I've got control of the area, I can use this and whatever else I want, I can do anything really. So all I'm going to do, line that up, chuck some more on it, drop that because I keep forgetting it's front heavy. That was a close call. Then all you do, start it. Are you okay? There we go. And then just lower it down and start drilling. There we go, I accidentally knocked the top with my hand, which automatically activates the kill switch. And there's a nice hole there. If you see this kind of stuff, this kind of really spindly, weird swarf, it means you are drilling at the right speed uh, for that material. Uh, I think it's something like 50 to 60 RPM for... Uh, 01 tool steel. I'm spinning this at 60, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, 60 RPM. That's good. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue drill out the rest of these. Then we can move on to handling. What? Handling? What am I on about? We can move on to beveling, uh, which is going to take ages. So I'll probably only film about a couple of seconds of me doing it because this is going to take me literally forever. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the blade so far. There's only so much you can do for drilling and just drill holes, bevel, then you're ready for heat treat essentially. I mean you can do a lot, lots and lots of cleanup beforehand. I only take it to about probably 320 grit, maybe even 400 before and then I take it back to that afterwards. It just takes away all the scratches and leaves a nice surface and it kind of dissuades um, uh, this just general heat treating stuff building up and it's not really a scale but it's uh, 
kind of coal, whatever else builds up on the metal over time. So, yeah, I'm going to drill the rest of the holes and I'll see you in a minute. Right, so that's drilling done. I have drilled all the other holes and I drilled a couple more random ones here just to lighten weight. I didn't want to drill too many. Uh, as you can see, I've wasted quite a lot of space. I could have drilled holes here, 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 there, there, up here. But I didn't want to reduce the weight too much because this is quite a, it's quite a hefty thing. So I didn't want it to feel so heavy in the front and there was nothing in the back to really grip onto and you know, real feel, really feel like there's any mass there. I also didn't drill any up here because of the bolster and I didn't I don't really want to have any kind of problems with this edge tipping into one of the holes so I just thought right I'll just leave that clear just in case anything happens as something is bound to <laughs> so now let's move on to beveling I've got to set up a quick jig in order to make beveling a little bit easier for myself because what I normally do if I show you guys over here it's a little knife that I'm making a video on. What I normally do is just clamp it in there on a slight angle, then just file away at it. Not going to work with this knife, or with this knife, this machete, because of its length. So if I come over here and just clamp it on like that, I'm going to be there for, well, a really long time. By the time I got to the end, it'll be flapping around like that. So I've just got to build myself some kind of contraption. I might even just. Uh, jig out a piece of um, plywood that will just sit on the back and then I can put a load of clamps on that, that might work. Or Yeah, I'll come up with something that I can bevel with this, so just hold on a second and I'll, I'll go make it. Right, so I've set up my jig, basically all it is, it's a longer bit of wood. I've decided to do it in sections, so I'll do the recurve portion after I do the uh, kind of main straight bit. So. I'm not going to change the angle of my grinder or anything, I'm not going to have any kind of, you know, hollow grinder or whatever, it's just going to be one kind of set V grind, it's just my way of doing it, it means I have to do it like this, I don't have a massive, if I had an absolutely massive belt grinder I probably would use it, but my dinky little belt grinder here, it just doesn't have the same kind of capacity to do that, just because of its size, that I burn through belts like alcohol, honestly. So, I've set my little guide up here, it's actually not that great at the moment, I need a longer screw really, but um, basically, idea is, you just sit like that, all day. So, I'm just going to do this to the best of my ability, try and keep my grind angle constant, um, we'll see how it looks after I've done it for, you know, half an hour or so. So I was halfway through beveling and then I had a good idea, I thought of something that might look cool. I'm going to drill a series of holes that's parallel with this. I don't know why, I just think it might look cool. So I'm going to do that and uh, other than that the beveling's gone really well, it's all very even, it's, uh, yeah, it's a 16mm bevel, it's the probably the highest sabre grind I give a chopping thing because it, if it's chopping you it's not going to be sharp to any degree all right i might make this bit i might sharpen this just uh, this you know straight edge here as it is um the the knife portion but most of this is going to get barely any kind of sharpness to it it's going i could just run my hand over it and it wouldn't cut me it'd be like an axe you know you wouldn't run your hand up and down an axe and cut yourself it's not how it works. So I'm going to drill these holes and then continue beveling. Then when I finish, I'll show you how it looks. We'll do some sanding. Then we'll chuck it in for heat treat. Right. <sighs> That's everything beveled to where I want it to be. It's... I think I decided on a 16mm bevel. 
I think. Yeah, 16 mil bevel. Maybe it might have been 15, I can't quite remember. And yeah, both sides I've left about a mil, three quarters of a mil uh, just on the edge. So after I heat treat it, I can come back and it's not all completely warped. That would be awesome. And now I'm just uh, polishing up with some 60 grit. Just going to do that before heat treat just to get, you know, really deburr all the holes, you know, get rid of anything around the outside, all the scratches from filing. Then I'll do the bevel. I'm going to try, I'm debating whether to do a pronounced bevel or a rolled bevel. Uh, which is, uh, you can really see the bevel on a pronounced bevel. You you know, you can see where it ends and where the flatness of the uh, main portion of the blade is. You can really see it. Or you have a rolled bevel. The slight advantages to this are it allows a much better cutting edge. Because, oh well, a splitting edge. So if you're coming down on a, a bit of wood, as a pronounced bevel, it might catch. On a rolled bevel, there's a perfect transition into it and you can allow a lot more force to be transferred into it. So, I'll probably go for the rolled bevel, but I'll see how it looks. I'll try, I'll do a pronounced bevel, then if I don't like it, I can always uh, turn it into a rolled bevel. So, I'm going to get to sanding. Well guys, this is the progress so far. I'm really happy with the way it's starting to turn out. I've got one side done, the other side's still rough and nasty, but they will both look like this soon. <laughs> and this is as far as I want to take it for this part of the video. I'm going to do it in two parts, it helps, helps me upload faster since this is such a massive project, but I'm, I'm really excited for it in the future. I've also done one more thing, I've added another li little notch there, just kind of for fun. I, I, I like it. And think it is cool so <laughs> I've got no other reason besides that so yeah that will pretty much be it for this video and hopefully in the next one we can actually get to finishing this I think I'll probably do it in three parts I've done kind of the rough shaping then we'll do heat treat uh, cleaning up and just general kind of laying out for handling in the second part and then in the third part we will do stuff like you know the final fitting of the handles lanyard wrapping cleaning up of the handles sheath making stuff like that some some of the nicer touches we have to do at the end you know but that will be it for this video and i'll see you guys in part two